It's Fusion Friday. Today, we're gonna cover a really cool feature that isn't utilized as much as it should be, and it can unlock some really cool possibilities and simplify your node setups in the process. This is the Merge Operators function, and that's right, this whole video is about one drop-down menu, but you're gonna be surprised what it can do, and it's gonna make you love the Merge node even more. I'll be walking you through each one of the 10 modes, showing you what they can do, and give you a few examples of how to use them in actual projects. Let's start with the basic question of what is a Merge Operator? Well, Merge nodes combine a background and a foreground input. The operator is the process of how it actually combines them. Inside of Fusion, I have a background with a mask going into it and some text going into a merge node. The default operator is over, and all that's going to do is place the foreground input on top of the background. This one is super simple and everybody understands this. But what about the other nine operator modes? Let's give each of them a quick overview and then I'll showcase how they can be used. The in mode is going to use the background input as a mask to the foreground input. So if I come into the text and scale this way up, you can see the text is only going to be visible inside of this rectangle shape. And since the background input is being used as a mask, you will not be able to see any of its info in the actual output. The next mode is held out, and this is essentially a inverted version of in. It's exactly the same as going in and inverting a mask. Again, with this one, you won't be able to see anything from the background input. This next one's pretty cool. It works just like the in operator, where it only shows the, the foreground input, where there's info in the background, but with this one, it still shows the background. So normally you would set this up by either taking the background and plugging that into the text or plugging the background into the merge node, but now instead of doing that, all you have to do is set this to be a top, and that simplifies your node graph even more. Next up is XOR, or exclusive OR, or ZOR, whatever you want to call it. This one is going to show both of the images, but in any points that they intersect, it's going to show nothing. One thing to keep in mind with all of these different operators, changing the blend value or the opacity in either of them is going to change the result that you get. I'd recommend to just play around with this a bit so you get a feel for how that works. The next two, conjoint and disjoint, don't appear to do anything right away. We're going to come back to those towards the end because it's easier just to show you rather than explain it. Mask is very similar to the in mode, and this is one that I use all the time. Instead of applying the background as a mask to the foreground, it applies the foreground as a mask to the background. And as a bit of a pro tip, instead of switching this between in and mask to get the result that you want, you can also just click on the node and do control T to switch the inputs around. In most cases, that works totally fine, but there's two main reasons why you wouldn't want to do this. The first is maybe inside of this merge node, you use this to move stuff around. Well, in that case, when I flip this around, the text is not going to stay in the same position because now the transform is being applied to the shape. The other reason is if you're working with different resolutions. The merge node always takes its resolution from the background input. So if the background was 4K and the foreground was 1080, when you flip those around, you're going to get a totally different result. I have a full Fusion Friday on resolution and how to fix stuff like this, so check that out after. But continuing on, stencil is the inverted version of the mask. And finally, we have the under mode, and all that does is it merges the foreground underneath the background, so it does the opposite of what the merge node normally does. Most of the time, you just flip the merge node around to do this, but there's a couple of niche cases that you might want to set it up this way, or again, if you're working with different resolutions. Let's dive into some projects where I've actually used these different modes. This one's pretty cool, so it has a really nice outline with some inner glow and some fog applied to it. Looking at my node graph, it can seem kind of intimidating, but it's actually pretty simple. So we have all of the shapes right here, we have the text, and then that's just merged up over the background on some various effects. And this is all set up to be procedural. Whatever I put in right here at this S render is going to have all of these effects applied. So over on this side, I put in some text instead, and I got the same effect. So looking at this S render, I have the shapes coming out in this purplish color, and that's going to be a little hard to see with some of the other effects. So what I'm going to do is press A on my keyboard, and that's just going to view the alpha channel. So now where there's information, it really stands out. So when creating this, the first thing that I wanted to do was create a outline around the shapes. And you can do this inside of the shape system, but I wanted it to be set up so I could use an image or something in the shape system. I either way. When you do that, you would typically use a erode delete node. And when you plug that in and view it off to the side, nothing happens right away. So when you scale it up, you can see it's just growing the image or shrinking it. Normally, you plug the shapes back in as a mask input, come to the settings, multiply, and invert the mask, and now you have a outline. But this does create one issue. If I look at any of the points on the shapes, you can see it's flat and no longer has that pointed edge that it did outside of the shape system. Even if I come in the erode delete node and switch between these different filter methods, I never get that pointed edge. So instead of using this as a mask and growing the image, we actually want to shrink the image and then add in a merge node right after it. Now, if we connect the shapes into the foreground input, what we want to do is apply this this is a mask onto the, the erode delete node. So we'll come into the operator and set this to be in. But you can see that's just shrinking it down. It's not giving us that outline. So what we want to do instead is invert this by setting it to be held out. 
And now we have a really nice looking outline that keeps those pointed edges. So really cool way to go about this. So in my node graph, I have that setup right here that I have those merge nodes coming to create an outline. And then I throw some nice glow on it. And then that gets merged up over the next step. This one starts with a fast noise node, and I'm going to turn off that alpha channel by pressing C so we see all the color. And this one just has some purple and blue color created by a fast noise node. Then it's connected into a merge node, and the operator here is set to stencil. So it's going to take all of our shapes and just subtract that from the image. So that way we only see the fast noise where those shapes don't exist. Then what I did is added in a bunch of glows, so the glow bleeds into the area where the shapes are supposed to be. For this next one, I'm going to switch back to the alpha channel view. Then if we look at this merge node, you can see it's applying the fast noise as a mask to give this a smoky texture feel. Then the next merge is also set to mask, meaning it's only going to show the glow where the shapes exist. And then there's two final merge nodes that just do the normal over operation to add in our outline and then a nice black background. Now one thing you might be thinking. Couldn't I have just taken this S render and applied this as a mask into the fast noise node to get the same thing? And you're right, as you can see, when I plug it into the fast noise with multiply by mask and apply mask inverted turned on, it has the exact same result. Now, the reason you might want to have it set up this way is if you had some effect node in between here. Like, let's say I used a transform because I wanted to animate this and I scaled this up just a little bit. If I had this mask plugged into the fast noise node, you can see this would totally break the illusion because it's masked and then it does a scale and then it applies everything. So if I apply the mask after the fact, it's going to work totally fine and give us the right result. So in this case, you could set it up either way, but using the merge node gives you more flexibility in the end. Let's take a look at another example that will showcase the conjoint operator. But first, I want to mention my website with templates. Many of you already know about them and use them on a daily basis. The editor collection pack is a set of over 20 time-saving edit page tools with no need for keyframes. I've been using them throughout this video to create zooms, highlights, putting my camera in the corner, and more. Then there is the editor titles pack, which contains 270 of the best titles for DaVinci Resolve. There's a ton of different styles, and just like Editor Collection, you can customize the animations without any keyframes. So if you want to support the Fusion Friday series and save a ton of time in the process, check it out, link down below. Now let's take a look at that conjoint operator. In this scene, I have it set up so these two text nodes cast a long shadow, and the, the quick way to set that up is by using a raise node. You just have the center X set way off to the side, and then the decay brought, brought way down. Then that goes into a bitmap node with a high value brought down, so it brings it all up to a value of 1. And finally, that goes into the background node so we can set its color and transparency. I did the same thing with the second text, giving it a different color. And you'll notice with both of these, I have the alpha set to 0.5, so some of the background color can bleed through. Now, when you normally merge these up, this is what it would look like. The shadows are going to overlap, and it's not going to look that great. But using the conjoint operator mode, what this does is it's going to preserve the alpha channel and all the color values between those two. So if I view this last merge off to the side, down in the bottom you can see my alpha stays at 0.5, and then when I hover over to this side, it remains at 0.5 as well. If I left this operator on over, it would be 0.5, it would go up to be 0.75, and then back down to 0.5 over here. So that's why it gives us that visually different look. But using conjoint, we can fix that in a click super, super easy. Now disjoint is going to do something a little bit different than both of those. Where operator combined 0.5 and 0.5 to be 0.75, this one just adds them on top of each other. So we have 0.5 here, we have 1 in the middle, and then 0.5 off to the side. So you can use those two different operators for more niche cases like this one. Conjoint's my favorite, I, I haven't really used disjoint that much, but it's there if you need it. Something that I want to point out real quick is working with a multi-merge node. When you plug in a few inputs to this, you can see it has that operator mode as well. And let's say I select the text layer. When I start changing this, you can see it's only going to modify the layers below it. So in this case with text, it'll only modify the orange background. But if I select the gray background here and start messing with the operator, you can see it's going to affect both the text and the orange background. So it's exactly the same as setting up two merge nodes and coming in here and changing the last operator where it affects everything that came before it. This operator is also found in the tracker node, so you can track an image and then plug into the green input something you want to overlay and have the track applied to. And in there, there is an operator mode, so you can use your, your tracked result as a mask onto the original input or do something like that. I actually use the operator in my Iron Man HUD video, so if you want to see how that could be used with the tracker node, check it out, link down below. And then if you want to get really nerdy and get all the details, in the Adventure Resolve manual, it actually shows you all the mathematical operations for each one of these operator modes, so you can check that out as well. But that pretty much wraps up the video. If you guys have any questions, let me know, and let me know if you have suggestions for more Fusion Friday content. Check out my website, link down below, to support the series, and I'll see you guys next time.